Good morning. I'm teacher Laura and I'm here and happy to read stories with you. I'm sorry we're a little bit late. We had a little bit of problems on our side, but that's okay. We'll get started soon. I'm ready to sit share uh, several stories with you. Most are about friends helping friends, which is uh, an idea that's really important to me. So the first book I'm going to read to you is Farmer Duck by Martin Waddell, illustrated by Helen Oxenberry. This is for Anna and for Sebastian, David, and Candlewick. There once was a duck who had the bad luck to live with a lazy old farmer. The duck did the work. The farmer stayed all day in bed. The duck fetched the cow from the field. How goes the work? called the farmer. The duck answered, quack. The duck brought the sheep from the hill. How goes the work? called the farmer. The duck answered, quack. The duck put the hens in their house. How goes the work? called the farmer. The duck answered, quack. The farmer got fat through staying in bed and the poor duck got fed up with working all day. How goes the work? Quack. 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 Oh, Gracie. The hens and the cow and the sheep got very upset. They loved the duck. So they held a meeting under the moon and they made a plan for the morning. Moo, said the cow. Bah, said the sheep. Cluck, said the hens. And that was the plan. It was just before dawn and the farmyard was still. Through the back door and into the house crept the cow and the sheep and the hens. They stole down the hall. They creaked up the stairs. They squeezed under the bed of the farmer and wriggled about. The bed started to rock and the farmer woke up and he called, how goes the work and... Moo! Bah! Cluck! They lifted his bed and he started to shout and they banged and they bounced the old farmer about and about and about, right out of the bed. And he fled with the cow and the sheep and the hens mooing and buying and clucking behind him. The duck awoke and he waddled wearily into the yard expecting to see, expecting to hear, how goes the work? But nobody spoke. Then the cow and the sheep and the hens came back. Quack, asked the duck. Moo, said the cow. Bah, said the sheep. Cluck, said the hens, which told the duck the whole story. Then, mooing and buying and clucking and quacking, they all set to work on their farm. This next book, this next book is a classic by Leo Leone called A Color of His Own. This is to Vera Barbara from the author. Parrots are green. 
goldfish are red. Elephants are gray. Pigs are pink. All animals have a color of their own. Except for chameleons. They change color wherever they go. On lemons, they're yellow. In the heather, they're purple. And on the tiger, they're striped like tigers. With this thought, whoops, sorry. One day, a chameleon who was sitting on a tiger's tail said to himself, if I remain on a leaf, I shall be green forever. And so I too will have a color of my own. With this thought, he cheerfully climbed onto the greenest leaf. But in autumn, the leaf turned yellow and so did the chameleon. Later, the leaf turned red and the chameleon too turned red. And then the winter winds blew the leaf from the branch and with it, the chameleon. The chameleon was black in the long, long winter night. But when spring came, he walked out into the green grass and there he met another chameleon. He told his sad story. Won't we ever have a color of our own? He asked. I'm afraid not, said the other chameleon who was older and wiser. But, he added, why don't we stay together? We will change color wherever we go, but you and I will always be alike. And so they remained side by side. They were green together. and purple and yellow. And red with white polka dots. And they lived happily ever after. That's A Color of His Own by Leo Leone. So this book is by, it's called If Not For The Cat. And these are poems, a form of haiku by Jack Pilecki and the paintings are by Ted Rand. Both of these, the author and the artist, are from right around here, Mercer Island and I think Seattle. Here we go. If not for the cat. This one is for Mary Chalker and with love to Gloria. If not for the cat and the scarcity of cheese, I could be content. Thank you. 
I, the hoverer, sip the nasturtium's nectar and sing with my wings. Boneless, translucent, we undulate, undulate gelatinously. I am slow, I am slowest of the slow, I am in my tree, I am. We are wrinkled hulks with astonishing noses. Our ears block the sun. How foolish I am. Why am I drawn to the flame which extinguishes? Raucously we caw, your straw men do not fool us. We burgle your corn. I snack on my back, crack my dinner on my chest, bliss in the water. Don't think about it. Just leave the vicinity if you hear my tail. Gaudily feathered with nothing at all to say, I can't stop talking. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are many in our hill. I spend all my time picking ants up with my tongue. It's a busy life. Safe inside my pouch sleeps the future of my kind, delicate and frail. I have no hatchet and yet I fell a forest. My teeth are my tools. From nests in the clouds, we survey our dominion with telescope eyes. When I raise my tail, expressing my displeasure, even wolves make tracks. Wingless we went in, but we emerged as flyers, and oh, such colors. Did you know all the animals in this book? Let's see if we could talk about them. We have the mouse, who's hoping for cheese. The hummingbird, 
drinking nectar from a flower. Jellyfish deep in the ocean. An elephant and a bird. The poor moth who goes to the flame. The crow who's not afraid of the scarecrow. The otter who swims so well on its back. The rattler, rattlesnake, rattle here, fork tongue there. And now the beautiful parrot who learns words from people. Ants, ants everywhere, mostly black, but here's a red one. And then the creature that eats them, the anteater. Two kangaroos, mom and baby, all tucked away. The beaver who chews the trees and makes them fall. The eagle, like sometimes we see in the skies here. The stinky skunk. And beautiful butterflies. Here's the caterpillar. That's if not for the cat. And here, my last book is one of a favorite of a friend named Claire and other kids. It's about a superhero, but about friends who help. Superworm by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Super worm is super long. Super worm is super strong. Watch him wiggle, see him squirm. Hip hip hooray for super worm. Help, disaster, baby toad has hopped onto a major road. Someone help him, quick, oh no. Look, a super worm lasso. The bees are feeling bored today. They need a nice new game to play. Cheer up, bees. No need to mope. It's Superworm, the skipping rope. They're happy now. Beetle's fallen in the well. Is she drowning? Who can tell? Not to panic. All is fine. It's Superworm, the fishing line. And out she comes. Then toads and beetles, bees and bugs, brother snaps and sister slugs, Uncle Earwig, Auntie Ant, clap and cheer and chant this chant. Superworm is super long. Superworm is super strong. Watch him wiggle. See him squirm. Hip hip hooray for Superworm. The chant is carried on the air to Wizard Lizard in his lair. He mutters in his servant's ear. Find that worm and bring him here. The servant crow is black and grim. Everyone is scared of him. They all let out a fearful shriek to see their hero in his beak. The wizard waves his magic flower. 
Now, Superworm, you're in my power, and you must tunnel, writhe, and coil to find me treasure in the soil. Superworm is very cross to have a lizard as his boss, but when he tries to slink away, the wizard's magic makes him stay. For days, he tunnels, twists, and winds, but all the treasure that he finds is two small buttons, one, two, half a cork, a toffee, and a plastic fork. The lizard flicks an angry tail. Have one last try, and if you fail to find that treasure down below, I'll feed you to my hungry crow. The crow is flapping through the night. Everyone looks up in fright. They see him perch upon an oak and listen to his dreadful croak. Superworm is good to eat. Superworm's a special treat. He'll be juicy, fat, and firm. Hip, hip, hooray for Superworm. Action, quickly, at the double. Superworm's in frightful trouble. We must help him if we can. We must hatch a cunning plan. The garden creatures leave their home carrying a honeycomb. They jump, fly, and crawl, and creep. And find the lizard fast asleep. They chew the petals off his flower to rob him of his magic power. The caterpillars fetch some leaves while busily the spider weaves. The web is strong. The web is tough. The web is plenty big enough. The wizard wakes. This isn't funny. I'm wrapped in leaves and stuck with honey. And the bees and beetles fly and lift the web into the sky. This is the place and bang, crash, thump. The wizard's in the rubbish dump. And now from somewhere underground, there comes a distant rumbling sound. The earth begins to heave and then, Superworm is back again. Superworm, the swing, the slide, the hula hoop, the fairground ride, Superworm, the belt, the hat, the crane, the train, the acrobat. Then toads and beetles, bees and bugs, brother snails and sister slugs, Uncle Earwig, Auntie Ant, clap and cheer and chant this chant. Super worm is super long. Super worm is super strong. Watch him wiggle, see him squirm. Hip hip hooray for super worm. This book is for Leo. All right, that was Superworm by Julia Donaldson and Alex Scheffler about friends helping friends. I hope you've enjoyed the books today, and I hope you tune in another day for other storytellers from the ECS department at the JCC. I hope you have a great day. I'm teacher Laura, and it's been a pleasure to read to you. Bye.